I'm introduced as God. Energetic, poetic and athletic You know I get down and dirty when it's time to set it I'm tearing through, clean your scene like ammonia I drown ya, flood four corners, the perimeter I wonder, cause earthquakes, bolts and lightning you So yeah, I've got the typical fashion YouTuber setup Hi all YouTubers, Dom here from Payday Pickups And about another video, as you saw from that intro Today's video is a banger I'm going to be going over my top 10 vintage pieces in my wardrobe and honestly this was so hard to curate because in total there was about 25 pieces that could have fit into this top 10 so narrowing it down was like it was so hard like I'll show you the contenders at the end and I've been doing YouTube for probably about four and a half years and vintage clothing has always been my main fashion style and I can't even lie I'm a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to like nice clothing like I just can't let pieces go like for example, like this Palace Adidas piece, like this is second hand and like I just love, like the details are just so nice and I just can't let it go. Like it's one of them pieces that even if I haven't worn it for like six months, I just know it has to stay in my collection. It has to stay in my collection. Like I just love the piece too much and it, they're not that easy to come across again, basically. That's why I hold on to them, kind of like a collectible. And also just to clarify, these top 10 are going to be in no particular order because honestly there was no way I could rank them because I love them for a load of different reasons and obviously they're all different vintage pieces. But the first piece we're going to start with is actually probably my most recent vintage cop and it is this 80s Reebok leather jacket. Like just look at the back of that, like oh, it's so beautiful. So it's got the kind of like felt embroidery patch, that big badge, the kind of turquoise R and it says Reebok International. And my favourite part about this jacket is the ageing and the wash on the leather, like it literally looks like a kind of like washed out blacky grey brown and then coming to the front we have the big R so kind of like a varsity jacket but we have the nice collar right there it probably was a workers jacket because it has the intersport embroidery right there and it's so so heavyweight and we have like the varsity cuffing and the cuffing at the bottom and it just fits so well nice and cropped and just makes you look like flipping Danny Zuko of Greece and this thing is just beautiful like the thing I love about this is you'll never find the same jacket you may find the exact same print but I guess I guarantee the leather will be like a different color it won't be this fade so moving on to the second piece I have a vintage Adidas piece this one makes me a little bit sad because I got this when I was in America when I was at the Melrose trading post which is basically a big flea market that happens in LA it's probably like the second most famous one behind the Rose Bowl flea market and I found this piece, if you remember my vlog, definitely go check it out. It's probably one of my favourite vlogs, to be honest. It was this vintage Adidas piece, this nice quarter zip, and the details on this piece are crazy. And the reason why I love it so much is the story behind it, as well as the piece in general. So, as you can see, it says July 11 to 30, 1966 England, and basically it says the World Championship Jules Rimmick Cup. So basically this was when... England won our only World Cup and obviously I'm a big football fan and I play football still so it's my main sport, been with me for life so to get a piece, obviously this isn't from 1966 but still the details and the quality so the nice crisp embroidery, we have the Adidas bit metal on the quarter zip, the quarter zip neck is kind of like a, like a bomber jacket and then the details on the sleeve we have the red and blue stripes and the stitching is just amazing. It's really heavyweight. To compare the weight, it's kind of like a like a champion reverse weave and it has this cool stitching on the cuffs. Like I've never basically seen that. And then the best part is the back print. Just look how beautiful. It's a big great bit. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. It's a, bit, a big great Britain flag. And as you can see, it's like a corduroy patch and then it has the big patch with the trophy and the England. And the funny story behind this piece is, as you can see from the close up right there, the ball looks like a volleyball. So obviously back in the day, that's what the footballs used to look like. So he generally thought it was a volleyball like piece. So he just thought, oh, I'll just get rid of it. He was asking for like 70 bucks at first. I bought him down to 40. After I told him it was football, he should have seen his face drop. I mean, I felt quite bad, but either way, I've got this piece and it's staying in my collection. So at least it's gone to a good home. And then we also have the Adidas bit on one of the sleeves, but super heavy quality, heavy weight, and it's just staying in my wardrobe forever. So moving on to the third piece, I actually copped this pretty recently. I did a whole separate video. It was some new stock that came in for Payday Vintage that we basically found from an American collector. And that is this vintage Playboy shirt. So in total, he sold us like five different items. 
for this one I had to keep for myself is the Playboy Marilyn Monroe. The reason being is obviously Marilyn Monroe is like the first person to kind of like make Playboy massive and famous. And also it is the fit of this piece. So it's a nice boxy, it's kind of similar to like a bowling shirt. And the details on this piece are just crazy. So we have the Playboy monogram with Marilyn Monroe. And then the best bit is the part of Marilyn Monroe on the buttons. And that was actually the first Playboy cover of Marilyn Monroe. Just fits so sick. And this is just such a vibe to wear when you're on holiday in the sun. I actually wore it in Madeira, a photo right here. And overall, it's just a beautiful piece. Like the material is really nice, really thin and lightweight. And to be honest though, the other Playboy piece that's a grail that I need to cop is the shirt with the magazine covers all over. It's like a complete monogram of just a load of different magazine covers and I just need that piece in my collection. Like it's so fire. And if anyone knows any links or where I can get it for cheap, because the only price I can find it for is like 150, I want to pay like either £100 and below. But if anyone can find that piece, then I definitely will cop because that is a grail to me to fit in perfectly with this in my summer wardrobe. So moving on to the fourth piece, and this is probably from my favourite brand. It's the brand that I've shown the most of on YouTube and probably the brand that I own the most of in my wardrobe. And how could I not mention them in my top 10 vintage pieces? And that is a vintage Tommy Hilfiger piece. But surprisingly, this is actually a bootleg piece. So if you know what bootleg is, bootleg is basically when they make a vintage piece using another brand's name, but it was never an actual piece. So it's not a fake piece. So it's not like they copied, for example, like that Playboy shirt. It's not like they made the exact same Playboy shirt. They basically make another design and some people kind of find it cooler because just trust me, just look at this piece. So this is a bootleg Tommy Hilfiger sweatshirt. I managed to get this on Depop. And I actually got this for like $15, so literally like £10. And look at the details so we have the ribbing on the tommy on the top of the neck which i've never seen in my life and then we have the big embroidery the tommy we have the flag and the hill figure you can kind of tell it's bootleg by the flag it just looks a little bit off but the next bit it is the cuffing on the sleeves also like the details on this are just crazy i don't think i've ever seen tommy cuffing on the neck or on the sleeves trust me if you see my tommy collection videos i have a lot of vintage tommy and then coming to the bottom, it's just like an elongated fit with a nice split hem at the side. And, and coming to the back, we just have the flag embroidered right there. And you can tell by the tag, it's a little bit off. Like you can tell it's fake. But either way, I think it's cool as fuck. And genuinely, I don't think I'll ever see anyone in the same piece. Like someone's probably just made a one of one piece. And that's why I think it's generally so sick. And that is why it's in my top 10 ahead of all my real genuine vintage Tommy. So. Sorry to the rest of my Tommy, but this is genuinely my favourite piece. So moving on to the fifth piece, the halfway point. This is a t-shirt and it's from another US vintage brand and that is Vintage Marlboro. So I've actually got a little Marlboro collection. Well, I did have a little Marlboro collection. Basically, when I moved out from university, I shipped the box back using fucking my Hermes and they lost my whole Marlboro collection. So I lost the tracksuit, the bags, the coat, the fleece. Very, very sad time, but we move on. But at least I still have my favorite piece from them. And this is the single stitch 90s Marlboro t-shirt. The reason why I love this, first of all, it's got that like nice soft vintage wash. It has the high neckline and it has the nice little bit of a vintage fade. It's not got the full like gray faded black. It's just a little bit faded. We have the beautiful bit of cracking and like paint splatters on the Marlboro patch. As you can see, it has the nice single stitch. And then I just love the back print on this. So we have the Coyote Bluff. And as you can tell, it's very, very faded. And this thing just fits so nice. Like it's tight on the neck, baggy, boxy fit, and a little bit elongated. And that is why it's my favorite vintage Marlboro piece. And it's probably one of my very first like proper single stitch t-shirts. Because honestly in the UK, like single stitch t-shirts aren't really like a big thing. It's much more in the US, like vintage in the UK is much more like sportswear, such as like Adidas, Nike, and then US brands such as like Tommy Hilfiger. It's more about like big brand logos, embroidery and bright colors. So it was nice to get like a vintage US piece. And I'm sad about my Marvel collection, but I still have a few pieces, so. That is that, but I was just so gutted about losing the little pouch. It was like a little CD case. I generally don't think I'll find that again, but it is what it is. So coming to the sixth piece, it is another vintage t-shirt and this is a vintage Adidas or Adidas. And this is a white tag. So a white tag is the early to mid nineties and these t-shirts just are just so sick. They're heavyweight and then they have just the insane amount of details. Like 
First of all, the black and purple just combo so sick. We have the Adidas embroidery right there. And then look at all the different colors. We have the reds, we have the whites, we have the greens. And like, these are bits sewn on top of the clothing. So it's nice and heavyweight, and it's still got that boxy fit. And I just love the whole faded look to it. As you can tell, the black's like completely faded out. It's gone to that like light vintage, the, the best wash to be honest. And then on the back, we have the same bit on the sleeves and then the purple and the red. So overall, I just really love the fit of this. It's like a boxy, kind of a little bit cropped. It's a size large, but it's shrunk a little bit. So it's like a nice boxy fit. And it's just so sick, all the colors. Like it reminds me of kind of like an African nations kind of like flag, like South African flag kind of thing. But yeah, that is my Adidas tee. I mean, they do loads of sick ones. I so always look for like a white tag Adidas piece. They're usually worth a bit and they have some cool and they have some sick details. So moving on to number seven, this piece is just insane. I probably should have done this one a little bit earlier, but either way, this is my Burberry Harrington jacket. So as you can see, we have the full Novacek right there, Novacek pattern, and then we have, surprisingly though, it's a purple, which I don't really like. I wish it was kind of red or white, but the reason why this jacket has to be in there is this thing is reversible. So basically what you get, you get two jackets for the price of one. Like I don't know why clothing brands don't really do it anymore because generally like more people would wanna buy that piece. And for this piece as well, I paid 80 pound for it, which me personally, I think that's so cheap. Like these things usually go for about 200 pound and I thought this at one of them like vintage events. Always when you go to them vintage events, go at like the end of the day because people just want to get rid of more stock. So they'll always do good deals, you can barter them. So as you can see on this side, we just have our normal Navy Harrington jacket, the red logo embroidered, and you get the nice, beautiful Nova check on the inside. Proper football hooligans jacket, but I absolutely love this piece. You can dress it up, you can dress it down, and you get two jackets for the price of one. Like what more could you want? One piece though that I regret selling, which would easily have been in this top 10, was the Burberry reversible puffer coat that we got for Payday Vintage. Like, I genuinely think to this day that is the best piece we've ever had on Payday Vintage. We, that was basically this jacket, but a puffer coat. And I had the Nova check on one side, then beige on the other side. And it was just amazing. Like, I remember I kept it for like a month before selling it because it was just so, so beautiful. So moving on to the eighth piece, this is another piece which I actually got in that same Melrose vlog when I was out in LA. I didn't pick it up at Melrose, it was like just someone selling stuff on the street, as you do in LA. But I want, I love NASCAR jackets, because I love like, basically when it comes to vintage pieces, I like bright colors and details. And this piece just stood out as soon as I saw it above, hung up, I was like, I've got to get it. It is this McDonald's NASCAR jacket, like, People have it's very mixed reviews on this. People like laugh at it because like you look like a McDonald's worker, fast food worker, but the embroidery and the details are just insane. Like look at the McDonald's M. They've even embroidered the black bit, that like, is the drop shadow so it is embroidered. Then we have all the different patches. We have Ford racing, we have the NASCAR bit, and then coming to the sleeve, we have the flames, the McDonald's, the Coca-Cola, the Powerade, the NASCAR. Like, look how many details, like. This is what I mean by vintage pieces are just so much better. They have so many more details. It's a size 2XL, so it's super oversized. And then on the back, it just says, I'm loving it. Like, that is just so sick. Like, so sick. This jacket is beautiful. And this photo to an Instagram, probably one of my favorite Instagram posts ever. Like, to find a vintage McDonald's in LA wearing a McDonald's jacket. It was just so sick. And we have the McDonald's text right there too. So, NASCAR jackets, I definitely recommend getting some for your wardrobe because they're just so sick, like I've had a Budweiser one, we've had the multicolored one, but generally I've not found one as nice as this. So moving on to the ninth piece. So this one, I was a bit skeptical to put in a top 10. I got it recently and the reason why I put it in is I've never seen one of these in person before this. I've seen them on photos online and to get it in a mystery box is just like insane. And that is the Fendi monogram Zucker print. And this is the hooded zip up jacket, like, Look at this piece, it's just beautiful. The only thing with it though, I actually find it quite a hard color to style. It's like not beige, it's not brown. I don't even know what color you call it, but it's super, super heavyweight and thick. And then we have the Fendi details on all of the metal buckles. I really do wish it was reversible, like that'd be so sick. And it's just such a standout print, like, do you know what I mean? People's heads turn when you're wearing this piece. It's one of them standout pieces. But at the same time, I kind of don't like it because it's a bit too flashy and obviously, 
I don't know, I just don't like the whole, ooh, I'm wearing designer clothes, I look rich kind of thing. But the reason why I love it as well is Octavian's one of my favourite artists, rappers, and there's a photo of him wearing this piece, and it just looks so wavy. And this is why this piece had to be in there. But unfortunately, like that Burberry puffer coat, this one is going to have to go on sale on Payday Vintage. I can't keep this, so this is going to go to a happy home soon. So definitely check out Payday Vintage. Probably within the next month, this will be listed online. So moving on to the 10th and final piece. This is another vintage Adidas piece. So generally, I'm quite surprised I didn't have any Nike in there. But this is my yellow Adidas equipment sweatshirt. It's like... First of all, Adidas equipment sweatshirts. They're one of like my favorite pieces. Like Adidas equipment, they just have so many sick details. And the reason why I love this one, the yellow one is pretty rare. And I just love it, it has like natural distressing. So as you can see at the top of the neck, we have the Adidas logo monogram going all the way around, but it's like nice and distressed. We have the beautiful crisp embroidery on the front. We have the Adidas equipment patch on the side of the arm. It has quite a lot of stains all over, but I think it just adds some more character to it and a few little holes on either sleeve. But overall, it's just super baggy. And obviously it's got the nice cropped fit as well. And I don't know what it is, but yellow just really suits Asians. I don't know what it is. The skin tone maybe, we blend in a bit. <laughs> but I don't know, I just absolutely love this piece. Like I've had the green one before, I've had the gray one, I've had the black one, but this yellow one just hit differently. Like I just, as soon as I put it on, I was like, nah, that's got to stay in my wardrobe. And this photo here, I absolutely love. So yeah, that was my top 10 vintage pieces in my wardrobe. They were in no particular order because I generally don't think I could have ranked them. But please let me know your favourite piece out of the 10 in the comment section down below and why. I'd love to hear like your feedback and honestly why you think that's your favourite piece. But now to go over a few pieces which didn't make the cut. And to be honest, some of you will probably disagree and think they should have fit in the top 10. So the first one we've got right here, it is this 90s Polo Sport puffer jacket. So we have the Polo Sport bit on the back of the neck, the nice embroidery right there, and it's in sick condition with a nice cropped look on it. The reason why is it is red, and I don't really wear red that much, but it's gonna stay in the wardrobe. Next up, we have my Tommy fleeces. So I had the full collection of this. I sold quite a few, but this is the Tommy Sherpa one. Like, look how sick the flag is on that. Nice and cozy for the winter. And then we have the off-white cream one, which you all love, and the yellow one. The reason why these didn't get in is because Tommy just redid all their vintage stuff and they kind of wrecked it, kind of ruined the whole concept of these vintage fleeces. So another sick piece that didn't make the cut was this vintage camel t-shirt. So as you can see right here, the reason why it didn't is the pocket is just stupidly low for some reason. And this piece is actually from 1991. So in such good condition and the back print is just so sick. High neckline once again and single stitch. Also has some yellow in near the pocket, I mean near the armpit area. Another piece that didn't make the cut, these are pretty sick, these Nike Montreals. Like it's quite rare to find vintage sneakers in UK charity shops and I found these for like 12 pound. Literally just kind of like what the Nike Sakai's are kind of made from. And yeah, I just love the colorway. And sticking to that same colorway, another piece that didn't make the cut, to be honest, I probably should have put this in there. I absolutely love this piece. It is this vintage Adidas France training top. So I absolutely love the colors and the way the stripes go on the sleeve. So we have it on the top of one collar and then the back of the arm. And then we just have France on the back. But this thing is actually super warm. It's like a mini fleece inner lining. So it's kind of like, I think they would have worn this as like a training top to wear throughout the winter. So the only annoying thing is it's quite a summery top. So you do get a little bit sweaty. A few other bits quickly is these two pairs of bottoms. A load of you have been asking about them. So we have the Tommy Hilfiger carpenter pants. We have the denim ones right here. Tommy patch, Tommy patch there. And then we have the detailing all the way down the side stream, as well as the little Tommy Hilfiger. I don't even know what you call that. The bit I think is where you put like your toolkit. And then the next one is the one that you've all been asking about. I've never seen another pair of these in my life. And this is the corduroy ones. These are a beige corduroy, super, super baggy. Tommy big flag on the back. And then once again, the same as the blue ones, we have the little like tab. And then we have the massive wide leg. Sits really nicely on a pair of trainers. And then the final pair of bottoms, which also didn't make the cut. I got these recently because these are more chinos, so I don't wear them too much, and they are a pair of vintage YSL. So like, look how sick that bit is on the booty, the YSL embossed, and then it just has the little YSL patch, and these are just a straight leg fit chino. So kind of like a skateboard pant. That is that, and then the, probably the final thing, it is this Marlboro bag. So it's a beautiful piece. The only thing is, it's a little bit big, like as you can see right there. I kind of wish it was tiny, like my other one. 
which got stolen. But overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit long, but I wanted to go into full detail because I really love all of these pieces, tell the story and the reason why I love them. And if you're into vintage, you should completely understand because that is like the whole vintage culture. We love the pieces, we take care of the pieces, we love the wear, we love the stories about them. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this style of video and comment any other video ideas you wanna see on this channel in the description box below. I hope you enjoy this new setup. I now have two setups in my new apartment, which I'm so gassed about. And like just living here, I'll be so, so creative and I can't wait to bring out some more content. Be sure to follow my other channel too, which is called 2-1. We're gonna be posting there either one or even two times a week. So I'm really gonna be grinding this year. I wanna make the most of living like my first year after university, living away from home in my own space. And yeah, if you wanna check out the rest of my videos, I do loads of men's fashion videos, such as like fashion photography, ways to make money, lookbooks, how to styles, etc. Have a nice day and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. I'm back on my bending rules for the kicks. They quit to give them two cents. Put my circle tight like we glued hands. Like I don't believe in new friends. Trail light, I know the ice then. I drop the song, get a few wins. I crave the comfort in my own skin. Really, I just wanna feel the world spin. Watch me double that. I get it.